We know that for a quarter wave transformer, we need Z naught two is equal to the square root of Z in times Z L. In this case, we want the input impedance at the start of the quarter wave transformer to be matched to the remainder of the transmission line going towards the generator. So we want Z in to equal Z naught one, which is 50 ohms. So plugging this in, we, and then ZL is 65 ohms. So then we get Z naught two is equal to 57 ohms. If we use a quarter wave section of transmission line with this characteristic impedance, we can match the 65 ohm load to the 50 ohm feed line. Here is a movie. Showing the voltage and the current along a transmission line terminated by a quarter wave transformer here at the end, which is used to match the load to the transmission line. The beginning of the quarter wave transformer is marked by the vertical lines, the vertical black line. So the black line here shows where the quarter wave transformer begins, and the end of the graph is where the load is. You can see here, here's the wave propagating towards the quarter wave transformer and the load. And when the wave first reaches the load, there is a small reflection. You can see it reverberating back towards the generator. This is due to the fact that we turned on the source, the sinusoid. So we didn't have a sinusoid going on forever and ever already. So we get some transients at first, but once we reach steady state, which you can see here, you can see that there are no longer any reflections from the load. As a side note, I want to point out that if the input impedance changes along the transmission line, this means the reflection coefficient also changes along the transmission line. We know that the reflection coefficient at the load is V naught minus, this is at the load, so V is equal to zero, which is V naught minus E to the minus J theta D over V naught plus E to the J theta D. And since these exponentials at D equals zero, they are going to equal one, we just get V naught minus over V naught plus. But at some distance from the load, this is a V. All right, so at some distance from the load, we get V naught minus at position D, V naught plus at position D. This is going to equal V naught minus E to the minus J beta D over V naught plus E to the J beta D. And we can plug in for V naught minus, we can put V naught plus voltage reflection coefficient at the load, which is at D equals zero, which we just wrote above. And so then we get the voltage reflection coefficient at the load at D equals zero times E to the J, E to the minus J to beta D. And we can write this as the voltage reflection coefficient, the magnitude of the voltage reflection coefficient at the load times E to the minus J theta R, I'll define that in just a second, E times E to the minus two theta D. So theta R here is the phase of the reflection coefficient at the load at D equals zero. So that is if the, this voltage reflection coefficient at the load, if at D equals zero, if it has both a magnitude and a phase, the magnitude is here and the phase is given here. And in other words, when we have the reflection coefficient at position D, 
the magnitude of the voltage reflection coefficient doesn't change along the transmission line. We still have that here. It's still the same. And we still have that reflection coefficient load angle. Uh, but what does change along the transmission line, as you change D, you change the phase by minus 2. Oh, I forgot a J. Let's copy that from here. Minus J to beta D. So we have a phase is changing by minus 2 beta D at a, from a distance D from the load. Another way to look at the phase shifted voltage reflection coefficient, which is what we have here, is as follows. The reflection coefficient is Z in minus Z naught over Z in plus Z naught, which is analogous to the voltage reflection coefficient at the load, which would be ZL minus Z naught over ZL plus Z naught. So at some distance from the load, we'd have to use the input impedance instead of the load impedance to get the reflection coefficient. Let's go over an example that puts together a lot of different things that we've been learning about in this section of the course. The impedance of the load at the end of the transmission line is 70 ohms. So that's ZL. The generator voltage is given and the generator internal impedance is given. The transmission line is 10 meters long and it is air filled. The operating frequency is 100 megahertz. The characteristic impedance is 50 ohms. And a measurement, so we're taking a measurement of the input impedance of the transmission line. We're taking that at the generator. And it's found to be 70 plus J times 30 ohms. What are the values of the voltage maximum and voltage minimum? What, what's the value of Vmax and Vmin occurring along this transmission line? This is kind of a tough question, but let's see how far you can get. 